So are you on the hunt for a math curriculum for your fifth or sixth grader next year? And maybe you're curious about what Saxon looks like? Well, join me and we will take a look inside. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a Christ following wife and a homeschool mom to three boys. Here we talk all things homeschool and we will learn together how to use our roles as wife, mom, teacher, and homemaker in order to glorify God. So we have used Saxon with my fifth grader turning sixth grader um, for six years now. So he used kindergarten first, second, third, and then he used Saxon 5-4, and he is wrapping up Saxon 6-5 this year. And so obviously we like Saxon. Um, it is not the most popular of homeschool curriculums, and that is okay. I understand why, um, but it doesn't make me like it any less. So how Saxon is set up is their K through third grade kind of goes together. It's kind of the same model um, and it's pretty teacher intensive. And then, which I will have a video on that coming soon. And then math five, four through eight, seven, which is um, fourth grade through seventh grade for advanced, or it is sixth grade through eighth grade um, regular, I guess. Um, those are set up differently and I will show you that today. And then they're eighth grade on up or ninth grade on up um, is set up totally differently, which I haven't used that. So I can't speak to that until I get there. But please know that I'm going to show you what this is and what's in it, but know that I adapt this. I do not do it exactly how they say, because it is a lot. And that's the biggest complaint about Saxon. So we'll talk about that when we get there, but just know that I don't do this exactly as I'm going to show you. Okay, so here you have the contents, so you can kind of see what is going to be in each lesson. So there is a ton of review in Saxon, so some people just skip the first several lessons, um, even up to 20. I mean, it just kind of depends how you want to do it. Some people just do them quicker. I tend to just kind of use them as a review, but maybe not do them fully, um, because usually he remembers everything pretty well. So every... 10 lessons or so you have an investigation so this is where instead of doing a regular lesson you dive deep into one particular subject and then i will show you that as we get to those and then every five lessons you have a test and i'll also show you what those look like so we're going this is about halfway through we're talking about writing tenths and hundredths as decimal numbers changing improper fractions to whole or mixed numbers, um, reducing fractions, scale drawings is the investigation here. And then toward the end of the book, we're talking about least common denominators, area, um, dividing by decimals, things like that. And then there's always these topics at the end that are kind of just additional things that if you want to work on them, you can. Okay, you have a letter from the author. You have preface, you have their whole philosophy if you want to read through that. Program components, so there's the textbook, which is what we're looking at now. There's tests and worksheets, which I will show you a sample of one of those. There's a solutions manual, which I will show you. And then there's a program overview. There's also lots of recording sheets that I don't have with me, but those all do come with the tests. This tells you kind of how a lesson is set up. Again, this is if you are doing it to a T, this tells you break down how it works best according to them. Um, and I don't doubt that, but it would take a really long time. I mean, as you can see, warm up 10 to 15 minutes, new concept five to 15 minutes, lesson practice five to 10 minutes, mixed practice 20 to 40 minutes. So if you add those all up, let's say it took the most amount of time, 40, 50, an hour five, an hour 20, just for math. So I mean, it would take a long time, but I mean, it is good stuff. Talks about the investigations and the tests. Talks about where to find help. And then it tells you your list of materials that you're going to need. Because for those investigations, sometimes you need some extra stuff. And then here we are in our first lesson. So I'm going to go more toward the middle of the book to show you a lesson, just because, like I said, that's mostly going to be review. So we're talking about fractions, decimals, and percents. So there's always this warm-up section. It has 
um, facts practice. So this is where you take your timed test. And this one tells you to take test C, but right here on me, I just have test H. And so these look like this. You will time them for a specific amount of time. So then they can fill out how long it took them or what score they got. Those are double-sided. And then you move on to mental math for these ones. So in their heads, they do those. And then a problem-solving problem. It pretty much looks like this on every lesson. Then here's the new concept. So like I said, my son teaches this to himself basically and then just comes to me if he has problems. They show examples and solutions. So they work it out for them and then they have them do an activity sometimes. So for decimals and percentages, it makes sense for them to do kind of a hands-on activity. It goes on to the lesson practice. And so then I grade, before he moves on, we grade the lesson practice together. So I can see for sure that he understood what was going on. If he gets all his lesson practice right, that shows me that, because lesson practice is just practicing the new concept that he learned. So if he can get all of that right, then I know, okay, it really stuck. And then he moves on to mixed practice. Now I never make him do all of the problems on mixed practice. There are always 30 problems. And I just don't feel like he needs to work for that 30, 40 minutes to get that done. So we'll usually do evens or odds. And there's always a good mix of review and it tells you right under the number what lesson that came from. So let's say he gets to this one and he doesn't know how to do it. Well, it tells you, you learned about that in lesson 41. So he can flip back to lesson 41 and read over it and remember how to do it. And then it moves on to the next lesson. So the investigations, I will show you. Always have this colored bar at the top. And so, like I said, you're taking a deep dive on something specific. So they're talking about patterns here. And so there, there's a little blurb about what we're doing. And then they do examples and then they work out the solution for you so you can see how it's done. And then you do some practice yourself. And then another example, solution, and then work it out yourself. Example, solution, work it out yourself. And usually on investigation days, that's all I make him do. He doesn't have to do an additional lesson. That just is considered his lesson for the day. And a lot of times there will be a printable or something that you'll need and it just comes in the test packet. And here's what an actual test looks like. So these are in the same packet with the time test and with the printables for the investigations. And so usually I make him, he has a notebook separate that he works out the problems in and then just writes the answers on here so this doesn't all get jumbled up. And it's usually always one-sided. With these, they come in a booklet, but I always go and get the binding cut off. They're all, they are perforated if you just wanna tear them out one at a time, but I usually just get the binding cut off so I can file them. We use the um, file crate system for organizing our paperwork, um, but you can do it however you want. And then here is the solutions manual. So it just goes through, here is investigation one and the answers. So it just goes in order of the textbook. Lesson 11, there's the warm up answers. There's the lesson practice answers and then the mixed practice answers. And it just goes on throughout the whole thing. And then toward the end, there are the appendix topics. So if you do those extra topics I was talking about, all the Roman numerals and base five and whatever, your answers are there. Then here's supplemental practice. If there's something you want your kiddo to work a little bit more on, there's supplemental practice within the book. And then here's the key to that. And then in the very back are the facts practice tests. So all of those practice tests that you take, I just read off. He tells me how many he did each time and then I just read off the answers and he grades it himself. And then here's for the actual tests, those worksheet style tests that I showed you, all the answers to that. So I kind of showed you how we adapt that to make that work for us, how we kind of condense it to where it's not quite so long. Um, there are about 120 lessons. I don't know if you saw that in there. 
And then that does not include the 12 investigations and the 23 tests, I think there are. So if you take 120 lessons plus 12 tests, that brings you up to 132 plus 23 tests, that's 155. And so the average school year is 180 days. So um, you can divide that up however you wanted to. We have been doing four lessons a week. Um, and then we include tests as a lesson and investigations as a lesson. So that's why it kind of was longer for him, but we only do math four days a week. Okay, so some of the pros real quick for Saxon that I, that make me love it, is that it is intensive. So um, I don't feel like there's gonna be any gaps or holes when it comes to math for my kiddos. Um, I know some of the other gentler ones are great, but sometimes I've looked at them and been like, so we're teaching this and this, but we totally skipped over telling time or we totally skipped over whatever. And so far I've not seen any holes in Saxon. Um, what I love about the fourth grade on up, fourth grade advanced, fifth grade regular on up is that it's really kind of self-led. And so as long as your kiddo um, has some pretty good reading comprehension, then they can teach themselves the lesson. Or if you want to teach it, you can for sure. But um, it's easy for my son to teach himself and just come to me if he's not understanding it. And then I also love Saxon's spiral approach. That's what first drew me to them. That and the fact that I use Saxon in public school, so I was familiar with it. So when I was a brand new homeschool mom, I knew nothing about anything and didn't even know that you should look up YouTube videos about this stuff. Um, I just was like, Saxon, that looks familiar. Let's try that. And um, But their spiral approach really works good for us. So it's not... You can't move on until you master it. It's let's touch on it and then in a couple of weeks, let's touch on it again and let's touch on it again. Um, that way you're just constantly building on your knowledge that you already have. And that way you don't, you know, move past something and then months later need it for something else and be like, wait, I don't really remember how to do that. The cons to Saxon are it's intensive. So that was a pro for me, um, but I know some people just aren't about that life and that's okay. Um, but it is intensive and so it does take work and it does take time even with my adaptations it's still like you know a good 45 minutes every day working on math um, so it's not easy by any means and then so it's intensive it's long would be a con um, if you do it full out especially um, but also as you can see there was no color there were no frills there were no Nothing. I mean, it was pretty black and white. And even um, at this age, they don't even use the manipulatives anymore. After third grade, they stop using those. And so even the pages um, that go with the investigations and stuff where they might have to cut and glue stuff or whatever, those are still black and white. There's no color, no pictures, unless it's, you know, necessary to the lesson. But by and large, it is a very dry curriculum. And I know that turns some people off, but for me, math is okay in black and white. You may not want to do science that way or history, you know, that could get kind of boring, but I feel like math doesn't really need to be bright and colorful. It's numbers, it's figuring, but that's just my opinion. So hopefully this kind of helped you see um, if Saxon is something you want to look at. Hopefully this gave you a good idea on if Saxon is something you want to look at further for math, especially the 6-5 level. I will be releasing a video on Saxon 3, flipping through that for you if you want to look at something, you know, in those lower levels. You know, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I will be more than happy to answer them. And be on the lookout for that grade 3 video. And I have a Biblical Womanhood video coming out soon. And let me know down below, for these, you know, kind of middle school grades, what is your favorite math curriculum if you are a homeschooler? I thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.